everyone, and today is a new episode for Fit to Eat Nutrition, the radio show. And today we have Brie Anna, and she has been on Good Morning America, People's Magazine, Women's Health Magazine. She's even been, been featured in Germany. You've probably seen her on YouTube or her on YouTube station. So she has lost over 100 pounds naturally in less than one year. And I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering how she has done it. So let's find out. All right, so today we have Brie, and she has lost over 100 pounds naturally, so I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be really interested in this story. And as I mentioned, she's been on the national scale with her success story, so I'm pretty sure a lot of these questions are uh, very familiar with her, for her, but we're just going to go ahead and just ask her, uh, introduce herself, who she is, where she's from, what she does for a living. And why did you start your fitness journey? Okay. All right. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to do this. I really appreciate it. Um, I had the opportunity to go back and look at uh, some of your previous podcasts with uh, Mary and with Brittany, and I loved it. I'm a huge podcast fan, so, um, (laughs) so yeah, super excited. But my name, again, is Brianna, and I am 33 years old. I am a wife. I am a mother of a beautiful one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, um, and a little over one-and-a-half. And And, um, I live in western New York, and I work for the New York State Department of Labor, And uh, my background is sort of like in mental health and addictions and counseling, that sort of thing. I have a master's degree in psychology and um, many of the positions that I've held in the past have been like crisis counseling positions or substance abuse counselor positions, that sort of thing. And um, I'm also a certified personal trainer. So I'm certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And I am, you know, currently doing like individual and group workout sessions virtually as well as in person. And I'm kind of like in the beginning of like starting my business and everything like that. Um, And it's called Beyond Capable Health and Wellness LLC. So we're sort of like right at the foundation of sort of starting that and building that brand. Um, But As far as like my health and wellness journey is concerned, I began my health and wellness journey in June of 2020. It was June 23rd of 2020 to be exact. And the reason that I began it was because there was many reasons really. (laughs) I don't even know where to start. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where where to begin with that. Um, But well, first and foremost, one, you know, my daughter. So I had just given birth to my daughter in December of 2019, and the moment that I became pregnant, um, a switch sort of went off for me that like how I ate, how I exercised, my stress levels, my mood, the environment that I was in, like all of that played a huge factor on my child. And so I really had to be watchful and mindful of those things. So I really think the health and wellness journey to a certain extent began during my pregnancy because I was a lot more conscious of everything, my physical activity and my nutrition and um, my mood and all of that. And so um, I think it probably started there. But then what really sent it over the top was, you know, I'd given birth, I was 281 pounds, I was at my absolute highest weight um, that I've ever been in. And um, we were in the middle of a pandemic, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So your daughter at that, not the worst time, but in the 
crazy time. So exactly. you, I don't mean to cut you off, but you know how you go on like social media and they be like, I have a pandemic baby. Like you have right. a, a pandemic baby who's, who is used to seeing people wear a mask. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I feel these children that are coming up yeah and everything that is going on I'm just yeah. so curious and then you look see. at you and me and then we went through a recession two of them in 90s and then in the 2000s we had September 11th we had the pandemic exactly. Ebola swine flu bird flu exactly. yeah the 20 the 20th the end of the 20th and early 21st century has been pretty extraordinary for us <laughs> in our age group <laughs> It really has. And uh, I don't think I've ever talked to anyone that could say that they were a new mom in the middle of a pandemic, like what we're like going this. through. Like this, yeah. Right. The people are like not, now, yeah. that, where, that I have personally spoken yeah. to them, you know. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's new. And so that brought about a lot of fear for me. And everyone was saying how, like with COVID, if you were overweight or obese, that, you know, you're at a greater risk for or serious complication if you contracted COVID mm -hmm. and I already had a lot of concerns anyways about my health just being morbidly obese you know uh, risk for high blood pressure and high cholesterol or diabetes pre-diabetes you know heart disease and you know all these different things um, and so to add COVID on top of everything else it was just a lot all at once mm -hmm. and so it was the combination of like my daughter and realizing that I have to do better not just for myself but for her as well mm -hmm. and then um also like being in the middle of a pandemic and just like in survival mode like what do I yeah. need to do to survive this yeah. <laughs> um is kind of what triggered everything and started the health and wellness journey well, that's that's good because a lot of people are saying that this COVID pandemic thing, 2020 has been the worst year in my life. And I feel like for some people, it's been some of the best year, the best year of our life because we're actually at home doing things that we know we should be doing for ourselves and others. And so that's just my fault. So, you know, yes. I mean, it was the most challenging year to like yeah. sit there and watch the news and hear about people like losing their lives and going through like serious um illnesses and hear about people losing their jobs mm -hmm. and like, the toll that it took on like the economy and okay. um I think like sitting down and like listening to other people's stories was very difficult mm -hmm. um but in my own experience um like you said it was just a a time of like self-reflection and transformation and mind renewal and so I really tried to make the best of a challenging situation yeah. as much as possible yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, it's been a difficult time but you know people like you and myself made it the best that we could and actually probably coming out better than what we started so and that's true <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned on your uh, your fitness journey? The biggest lesson. The biggest lesson that I've learned on my fitness journey. Mm -hmm. Oh man, there's so many lessons. Um, I would say lesson number one is just how important it is to practice self care. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's something that I've ever really took the time to practice in the past you know, working in the human service and mental health field and everything like that, you're always caring for everybody else. And um, you don't realize that you are not even operating in like full effectiveness when you're not taking care of mm -hmm. yourself first. You don't realize just how important that is. Yeah. Um, and so I think that I learned that. I learned that self-care is not selfish and that you really do need to invest that time in order to be your best for others. So I think that is like the first lesson um, that I learned. And then the second is just the importance of like self-love. Yeah. Um, because that's something that I don't think that I was practicing on the fullest level um, before. And it's just so important, you know, like the Bible says how, you know, um, like the greatest commandment is to love God. And then the second greatest commandment is to love others as yourself. So, but how can we love others as ourselves until we love ourselves? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
that was a huge, huge lesson for me. Um, and yeah. And then also, I think I just learned how um, capable we are as individuals of achieving amazing things. You know, I don't think that I realized before how capable I was. And that's why I named um, my business Beyond Capable, because um, I mean, I was just really made aware of that during my health and wellness journey. Like, wow, I can accomplish so much if I just put my mind to it. It's all mental. It all starts in your mind first. You're only going to achieve what your mind believes, you know? And if you set limits for yourself mentally, there's going to be limitations practically and in reality, you know? And so I think that I learned like the importance of just like correcting faulty thinking, stopping negative thoughts in their tracks, the importance of like positive affirmations daily, um, and the importance of like believing in yourself, um, and believing in your potential, um, yeah, so I definitely learned that on a, a deeper level during the health and wellness journey too, because if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't think you can do it, you'll never do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's the hardest part, especially now that you have your own little thing. I'm pretty sure you're already finding out that you can you can do everything that you need to do for your clients, give them a workout plan, give them the meal plan, tell them what to eat, what not to eat, the measurements and everything. But if they don't believe that they can do it, then they're kind of wasting their money, to be honest exactly and that's true yeah Yeah. so um what is the most underrated thing in the fitness and wellness industry right now most underrated most underrated um the importance well there's two things really that I feel (laughs) (laughs) I'm never just gonna give you one thing I'm sorry (laughs) that's okay Right. Oh, you said the one thing. Okay, let me tell you. Six. You do too. Um, <laughs> you do too. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the most underrated things is the importance of your physician in your okay. health and wellness journey. There are so many times where we're having difficulty losing weight and it's health related. There's like underlying conditions that that may be related to. And I think going to your physician is super underrated. Like, hey, I've been on this, you know, health and wellness journey. I've been eating right. I've been exercising. I'm not seeing the pounds come off. What next? You know, and it could be something as simple as them just ordering some lab, you know, work and making sure that all your levels and everything is fine. It could be hormonal issues that you're going Mm -hmm. through. It could be some deficiencies that you're dealing with. It could be a number of health-related issues to why you're not seeing results on the scale. And so I think going to your physician is super underrated. And then also getting a nutritionist, I feel is super underrated. Huge help. I never, I didn't go to a nutritionist at the beginning of my journey. And partway through my journey, I started going to one. And I'm like, why didn't I do this in the beginning? Mm -hmm. You know, Um, they can definitely, I get so many inboxes about like, well, what did you eat to lose weight? How often did you exercise and everything like that? And I answer, you know, every question that I get to the best of my ability, but I'm like, wow, these are things that a physician could help you with and, or a nutritionist can help you with. And if you're in a position that you're able to, you know, have a a doctor that you can go to, um, or, you know, be able to get a nutritionist, I definitely think that those tools should be utilized on your health and fitness journey. Yeah, most definitely. And to add on to that, to people who are listening, um, when it comes to doctors, make sure you find a doctor who actually cares. That's important too, because some doctors will push off some things that you say. Um, I've been very fortunate to find myself a doctor who's been listening to me and my concerns, and we're getting those taken care of. But um, just don't waste I guess your employers, well, not really your employer's money, your money, if you're paying for your health insurance out of your paycheck every month, don't waste your own money and just get any doctor. Make sure you find yourself a doctor who actually cares because and, those, sometimes those are hard to come by because, and actually doctors who don't want to constantly prescribe you medication as well. So 
Yes, I, that is definitely true. I just switched one of my doctors recently and it was one of the best decisions that I could have ever made. So I would just piggyback off of that and say to continue to search the same yeah. thing like if you want a therapy, you know, that first yeah. therapist that you go to is not always going to be the one, you know, you have to keep, it's like dating. <laughs> okay. You got to keep searching until you find the right fit. <laughs> yeah, because when I met my doctor, she's brand new. I just started seeing her this year and I felt like I've known her for like 10 years yeah so it's, it's great so and I'm able to email her text her whatever when I have a question or need to talk to her or whatever so this is a it's a good patient doctor relationship that we have mm-hmm. um what is the most overrated thing in the fitness and wellness industry oh detoxes <laughs> don't get me started on them <laughs> oh my gosh every time you know what's so funny somebody just sent me a, well no not somebody multiple people sent me an inbox recently because some company is using my pictures like my before and after pictures really? on Instagram and saying that like I use their slimming gels oh. or their boxes and all these different oh. things and no (laughs) just to clear that up no like you'll never find me you know drinking any special teas and detoxes or uh taking doing any slimming gels taking any like weight loss pills or anything like that um to try to lose weight no (laughs) no. you must be mistaken (laughs) So I know this is all topic. So are you, have you contacted this company or whatever? You might need a lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) You might need a a lawyer. Maybe. And just have them write something up and just send it to them. Yes. Yeah. Like a cease operations type of thing. Yeah. Cause they're using you without your permission. And then they, then they should give you the money that they're making off of your pictures as well. That's just my fault, but (laughs) Hey, I'll take it. I'll make a note of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely look into that because that's not okay. Um, mm-hmm. I know you have multiple pieces of advice, but uh, one piece of advice or multiple pieces of advice to listeners besides what you have already mentioned. Okay, yeah, definitely. So one piece of advice I would say is to um, be willing to adapt in mm-hmm. your health and wellness journey. I think sometimes we're, we get stuck, right? We're like, okay, I'm eating this 1400 calorie diet or whatever. And I'm exercising five days a week for an hour. What more could I possibly do to lose weight? I'm doing everything and the scale is still not budging. So I'm either going to continue to do what I'm doing or I'm going to quit and give up and just go back to what I was doing before. And I think that um, being adaptable and realizing like, wow, there is always room for growth. You know, like what can I switch up? You know, do I need to increase my weights with my workouts so that I'm burning more calories or more fat? Do I need to, you know, cut back on some of like, do I need to practice better portion control? Like, do I need to drink more water? Mm -hmm. Like, what is it that I need to do to see the results that I'm trying to see and just be willing to adjust I think is huge um and then also just um giving yourself grace will go a long way as well because so many times we start a process and then the moment we mess up we're like okay I'm done I messed up and this is over (laughs) I'm just gonna return back to doing what I was doing before um but I think it's so important to give yourself grace in this journey because I can't tell you the number of times where, you know, I lost 10 pounds and then gained three pounds. You know, it happens. The you, the weight loss, the success is not linear. You know, there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. And so you kind of have to just give yourself grace along the way and keep moving forward no matter what. Yeah. What's what like one tip that you would give people who are like just starting their fitness journey? one tip like what can they do to get started one thing that you can do to get started is make a commitment so Mm -hmm. I would say you know join a gym get a personal trainer um join um an exercise group but do something make a commitment in some type of way to somebody to something so that you're accountable Mm -hmm. um 
I think is huge and it's, it's going to motivate you, um, in your journey for sure. Um, I asked Brittany this in the last podcast and this threw her off because she said she couldn't pick one, but what is your favorite workout song right now? <laughs> oh man. Okay. Oh, uh, well at first it was Andy Manillo coming in hot. Okay. Um, but everybody in Lecrae, I think Lecrae is on that as well, but everybody was playing that song and posting it on Instagram with their workouts. And so then it kind of got played out to me. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, um, anything Lecrae, Andy Mineo, um, Mally Music, um, anybody really. <laughs> the beginning of my journey was a lot of Lizzo. It was mm. a lot of Cardi B, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Anything that gets me moving. Um, so yeah. <laughs> And um, last, the last part of this is how can listeners or people who's going to be watching on Instagram or YouTube can get in contact with you? Yeah. If they're interested would, in your services. Yeah, you can definitely reach me at Beyond Capable Health on Instagram. That's my business page or at Begin with Bree, B-R-I um, on Instagram as well. And message me. Yep. And I'll add that into the description of this podcast and video at the end of the recording. So I just want to thank Bree once again for taking time out for a busy schedule. Come on here and talk to us. And I hope you guys find this useful and get ready for the guests for next week. Hey, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Um, if you are listening, if you have the time, keep, please leave us a comment or um, a like or a follow that would mean so much to me and um, I appreciate you guys listening to this every week or daily if you need to Um, and make sure you check out the actual video on the fit tweet nutrition personal development page on YouTube see you guys next week